we'll be looking at risk in this video, uh, as well as relative risk. And to start off with, risk is really just kind of chance, the same thing really as probability. And risky things and risk we often associate with negative events, but it can be for positive as well. So the risk can be involved kind of the chances of something being better for you or something being worse for you, if you want to think about it that way. Chance of an event occurring, or you can think of chance of something being better or worse for you. Because we're often using risk when we're talking about things like smoking and lung cancer, for instance. Now, absolute risk. Um, this is basically just the general risk that ignores any contributing factors that would make something more or less likely to happen. So this is just down to your basic probability as well. So absolute risk and a factor would be something like the chance of having diabetes for any person on the planet. Or the chance of being struck by lightning, again, for anybody. So absolute risk, this is for anyone. So if we think about our first example, we're going to kind of work between the notes in the first example here so things make sense. Um, this table shows a cause of death for 11,967 people. Um, some are smokers, some died of lung cancer. So in my table here, I've got all this information, people who smoked, people who didn't, whether they died of lung cancer or whether they died from another reason. And out of here we can work on using calculations for risk and relative risk. So from this data, um, let's take a look at the risk of dying of lung cancer. Now I'm not saying absolute risk, but this is basically what I'm applying. Because I'm not saying what's the risk of dying of lung cancer for somebody who smokes, or what's the risk of dying of lung cancer for men, or anything like that. Just in general, for anybody, what is the risk of dying of lung cancer? So this is out of everyone. And again, everyone in this case is going to be the 11,967. So 11,967. So out of that whole group, out of everyone, how many of those people died of lung cancer? We can see that it was 434. So the absolute risk, or just the risk of dying of lung cancer, is that. And if you put it into your calculator, you should get something like this. Roughly. Okay, so again, what is the risk of dying of lung cancer for a smoker? So this is no longer absolute risk because I'm narrowing it down. Here we're taking into account a factor. And a factor is something that can influence your risk. So for instance, being under 21 and a male is a risk factor for um, increasing the chance of driving stupidly and getting in an accident. Being overweight is a risk factor that increases your risk of getting diabetes. Wearing a wide brim hat outside and avoiding midday sun will reduce your risk of getting skin cancer. So that is a risk factor that will reduce the chance of skin cancer. So factors again can also be good or bad. And if we're making a comparison for a particular factor, this is when we get into not out of everybody, but in this case, for a smoker, this is out of smokers. And this is sort of the same thing as those given problems that we were talking about in the previous sections. So given that somebody is a smoker, what is the risk of them dying of lung cancer? So here we're out of the smokers. Well, the total number of smokers we have is 7,316. 7, and out of those smokers, how many of them died of lung cancer? 397. So again, out of the smokers, what's the risk or probability, if you want to think of it that way, of dying of lung cancer. As a decimal, this becomes 0 0.05424. Okay, next example. What is the risk of dying of lung cancer for a non-smoker? So again, for a non-smoker, here we are out of the non-smokers. And again, given that they are a non-smoker, what is the probability of dying of lung cancer is another way to read that problem. So given that they are non-smokers, that's 4,651 of them. 
37 of those died of lung cancer. And if we put this into our calculator, you're going to get um, 0 0.007955. Okay, so these are the risks that we were looking at. And again, risk is sort of like probability. So we've talked about factors being something that can influence your risk. Now another word for us to know would be the baseline or the normal group. Um, and this is the group without the factors. So this is the group that we would assume is behaves like normal. And in this situation, it would be the non-smokers. They would be the baseline group because smoking here is the risk factor. So this is also going to be the placebo group in drug trials. If they bring that up, that would be your baseline group. And in a study of diabetes um, risk, the baseline group will be the healthy weight and healthy diet type of individuals, as an example. Your baseline group for diabetes studies wouldn't be the ones that eat bickies for breakfast and lollies for lunch. So the next thing we're going to look at here is relative risk. Um, and this is now when we're going to compare a ratio of two different risk groups. So relative risk is really when you're comparing things. So when you're comparing things, you're looking at relative risk, sometimes abbreviated as just RR. And usually a group with a risk factor is compared to a baseline group. So for instance, people with the risk, extra risk factor, and those without the extra risk factor. And a formula for it, for the relative risk, is risk with the factor divided by risk without the factor, or the risk of the group that's been exposed to the hazard out of the risk the group has not been exposed to the hazard. And these are things you're going to want to know. Those are not given to you. So you guys have to memorize these. Okay. So if we go back to our problem, what is the relative risk of dying of lung cancer for a smoker compared to a non-smoker? So the two groups I'm comparing, because with relative risk we compare groups, are going to be a smoker and a non-smoker. So one of those is going to be the risk with the factor, and the other is going to be the baseline group, or those without the extra hazard, I guess. So smoking, in this case, is the factor. So it's the smokers who are going to have the extra factor. So when we make our relative risk, we're going to take the risk of dying of lung cancer for a smoker, which we've already calculated it, 0 0.05424. Oops. And we're going to divide that by the risk of dying of lung cancer for a non-smoker. And we saw that that was that number there, 0 0.007955. So again, what's the risk of dying of lung cancer for a smoker out of the risk of dying for lung cancer for a non-smoker? Those that are have the extra hazard factor and those that do not, my baseline group. Okay, and when you put this into your calculator, you should get 6.818 roughly. So that is the relative risk. And what does this mean? We have to interpret these questions. So a couple of things for you to keep in mind, and again this is all stuff you'll have to know. Um, if your relative risk is greater than 1, you're increasing your risk. If your relative risk is equal to 1, that means there's no difference at all whether you do it or not. If your relative risk is less than 1, it means you're actually decreasing your chances of something happening. And as an example here, we've got the relative risk is equal to 1.9. This means your factor is increase or increases risk by 90%. Or we can say 1.9 times more likely. So it's more likely, and if you just take that relative risk and say times more likely, you get the right thing coming out of it. And the reason I know it's a 90% is because that's 1 plus 90 kind of like we did with graphs and exponentials. So your relative risk, for instance, with a 0 0.6, that's telling me that my factor is decreasing that risk. And in this case, oh, sorry, that's a typo. That should be 40. thought I'd fix that. Um, decreases the risk by 40% because that's 1 minus 0 0.6. That's a difference of 4, 0 0.4 for 40%. But I would just stick, if you want to keep it simple, 0 0.6 times less likely. So if you take your risk factor and say times, and then you have to figure out whether it's more or less likely.
So again, if it's greater than 1, it's going to be more likely. And if it's less than 1, it's going to be less likely. So if we go back to our smoking example, this means that smoking increases your risk of dying of lung cancer by da 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 we've got to finish the statement, by how much? This means that smoking increases your risk of dying of lung cancer by 6.818 times more likely. Okay, so we're putting it into words. And in fact, that's almost seven times. So you want to be specific with this, making sure that you're talking about the fact that it's smoking that's increasing your risk and of what? Of dying of lung cancer. So there's more examples to look at and a few out of the workbook as well. But remember, risk is just like probability in a way just using the word risk instead of probability. Watch out for those given or conditionals when you're trying to find the baseline risks. And relative risk, it's always going to be a fraction. You'll come up with a number and you're going to need to think about saying something like 1.9 time, times more likely or 6.8 times more likely or 0 0.6 times less likely. Anything like that is important for you. And be really specific with the context when you're writing your answer.